Now we're going to uh, jump right into the practical applications uh, with Jan of uh, Brains and Slush Pool uh, to demonstrate actual miners that are right there on the stage. Okay, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Jan. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, how to uh, connect a miner to a pool, uh, how to configure it in order to, to, to mine with, with your account. And I'm going to show you the Brains OS, which is the open source uh, initiative uh, as a firmware replacement from, from the standard factory firmwares. And you would see, if the, if the demo gods are with us, you would see an upgrade from a factory firmware of the S9 to Brains OS. And this guy is already uh, half uh, the system running. Uh, it's going to be a little noisy. Uh, I'll try to keep the fans down so that you hear what I'm saying. Um, so we'll basically, this is the outline of what you want to see. Uh, I'm going to show how you register with the, with the pool account. Then we do the de evilling of the S9, which is the factory firmware. And I will explain why it's kind of evil uh, in a bit. Uh, the connecting is obvious. Uh, the number four is just showing like what you can do with tweaking the miner. Basically, just this would be the downclocking part and the fence setup. And while the thing is going to be mining, I would be talking a little bit about why we really started this uh, thing. And finally, we'll probably get loud and just you'll see like how much noise it makes and uh, it, that it's not uh, a really easy business if you're really into this. Uh, okay, sorry. So, uh, setting up an account, it's pretty easy. You just do uh, sign up. Uh, we do a new account. I should come up with some password. Yeah, I'm not putting one, two, three. It would be a good in in incentive for somebody to uh, look into the account. Okay, there you go. So you get some confirmation. This is a standard process with like all the pools around the world. I'm not assuming there's going to be anything anything uh, different from when you're subscribing to any other service. So you just provide your email, you get an activation URL. Um, so now it's uh, set up, so I should be able to log in. Okay. Um, in this dashboard, we should finally see our hash rate when the miner is mining. Uh, but before that, we should probably know the URL uh, where to connect to. And we have to boot the miner. So this is the first critical part. Um, yeah, can you still hear me? Okay, so it looks like it's online. Uh, okay, uh, most of the miners some have some uh, login dialog. We do ship the firmware uh, without any password. So the first thing that you the first thing that you would do is to set the the mining account. Uh, I made it. This is now the mining mode already. But I made a, a test account that I registered just a few minutes ago. So let's use it. There's no password. This is some legacy thing from uh, from the Stratum protocol. Okay, now it's rebooting. Okay, so uh, it looks like we've been successful in the first part of the demo. So this miner is uh, connected to the pool, it's mining, and in the statistics you can probably observe uh, the hash rate. Um, also, the temperatures, uh, the number of hashing cores. Each of the of the miners, they usually have like three hashing boards. 
and each of the board has probably like 63 chips. Um, so this one is operating just one of the hashing boards so that we're really down on the fan speed and on the temperatures. Uh, you as a miner probably do care about the number of hardware errors that this creates, um, which sort of reflects the health of the device. So they should stay pretty close to zero, but they're, they're usually are not zero because the gates sometimes on the chip don't flip the right way. Um, and you should observe the number of accepted results. So this is already, uh, uh, we're seeing that the miner was able to supply three uh, mining results to, to our pool. So let's, let's have it mining for a bit and then we'll see if we get some, some nice uh, charts uh, on the pool website. Um, so this was the first part of the demo. I'm really surprised it went so, so well. Um, so let's do something about the end miner, uh, which is running the factory firmware. And you may be asking like, why do you want to change the factory firmware? Um, and this is actually the, the start of the whole story where um, we were like, we were basically having constant problems with the, with the quality of the firmware that the manufacturers are supplying and we would be like, you know, pretty much doing support for, for them. And we were thinking maybe it's a good idea to come up with an open source alternative to, to what the, uh, the standard firmware is providing and have something that's transparent, open, that people can verify that it's really doing what's, what it's supposed to do and that's not uh, actually evil. And by evil, what I really mean is that when I enable this guy, um, you will see this is a, a factory uh, reset miner. Uh, it's mining right away to uh, the end pool account, uh, which means like, you know, people sometimes set up their devices uh, and what do you expect that when you buy a car that it would be just driving for somebody else? No, not really, right? It's using your resources, but just going the other way. Um, let's wait till it boots. It's gonna get more silent a bit. For individual miners, uh, it's usually just uh, point and click to do things and like fill out some URLs. So you don't really get into the terminal part. But obviously, the bigger farms they have to they have to use some some level of automation because setting up the miners this way, uh, one piece by piece, is uh, very intensive. So, and obviously, it's it's possible. Yeah. I just want to show that it's really mining with their account. So this is the factory setting. Uh, yeah. There you go. So now it's hashing. But we're going to change the plans of this uh, firmware by switching to the open source one. So we go to the upgrade section. This firmware uh, has been downloaded from the Rensos website, uh, which before you do that, you are supposed to verify the GPG signature. This is the last time that you're need to do this because after the upgrade the firmware is going to act the, the, the same way like your Linux distribution or any other computer that tries to protect the user from uh, installing something that has not been authorized. Um, it looks like the manufacturer of this device, Bitmain, has uh, understood this initiative and they also included this feature in their new images. But the problem is that with, uh, if, you, if you do that, if you install the latest image, um, you actually lose some features on your device. So basically you will not be able to connect to it through SSH and do some uh, advanced things. Basically, they reduce their feature set without letting you know. It's not what you want. 
So this is the second part, which is uh, kind of critical, where I, where I am upgrading the firmware on a, on an S9. Let's see what happens. A similar story. Uh, how many of you do have a car? Most of us, right? Uh, so can you imagine, like two years ago, you buy a car? It's you know it can go forward, but the manufacturer says, "Oh, uh, it cannot do reverse," and you have to push the car in your garage like every time you come home from work. Um, and then uh, after two years, you would just find out that they were lying to you, and they just you know disabled that feature because they were thinking maybe it's not beneficial for you. So this is actually what happened with the um, with the endpoint of firmware, where uh, the uh, if you heard about the ASIC boost affair. Uh, the feature of ASIC Boost has been present in the f in the hardware since when it's been released, which I think is sometime around 2016. But the manufacturer decided it's not for you. So uh, going back to the original meme, uh, not your uh, uh, keys, not your Bitcoin. It means if it's not your firmware, if it's not open source, it's not your miner. Um. Let's see how it goes. I have to switch the terminal just to check if the thing is uh, coming to life or not. So it looks like we have succeeded the second time. So now we can look just uh, into a few features. I will I will set the mining account again on this miner, and I will downclock it and uh, you know fix the fan speed a bit. Okay, there you go. The screen ex looks exactly the same like on the T1. Um, when you look here, uh, you do have the pre-filled URL of, of our pool, but you know this initiative is sponsored by by uh, by what we do in our company. So we decided let's have it as a as a default URL. But the but the user account that's here present is not valid. So the device itself now is like really idling; it's not consuming any energy. So when you flash it, we're not going to steal your Bitcoin. So I'll define the new worker exactly the same thing like I did on, on, on the other device. At the same time, uh, I want to reduce uh, the noise level. So I will override the fan control. Normally, the firmware is trying to do a, a cruise control of the fans. So basically, it's taking care of the temperature which you set. But uh, since we did some exper experiments, uh, I'm just going to reduce the, the fan speed to pure 10%. And I'm going to do a downscaling of the frequency uh, by a factor of 50%. So this is the sound level that you would be normally hearing in a data center running those, those miners. Yeah. Okay, so even the second part of the demo succeeded. I'm probably lucky. I took the luck of, from other guys who were having networking problems here. Um, this device is actually a little bit more interesting in a way that's providing a little bit more info. Um, and now I can, now I can explain uh, a little bit of the internal things. If you guys could switch, uh, switch over to the view of the miners from the top so I can just describe just those parts. So, so this, okay, so this part uh, contains the control board and 
the control board itself doesn't do the hashing. It's only talking to the pool and uh, basically splitting the work provided by the pool to individual hashing chips. Each chip uh, is able to work on a, a, on a separate piece of uh, mining work. Um, and uh, each of the miners contains usually like three, I will explain this right away. Uh, each of the miners contains usually like three, four, five, six hash boards, and each hash board contain, contains about 60, 63 chips. Uh, for the miner, when you look at the overview page of like any firmware, but for us, uh, we put the, the most important things. Uh, you have the frequency that you set, so it's saying it's, uh, the, it's able to, to run at like six, 637 megahertz, but we just overclocked it, so basically downclocked it to half of it. Uh, you do care about the voltage, which is set for the whole hash board. Uh, this is the standard voltage for the S9s. And basically when you know the frequency, you're able to calculate the, the hash rate, which is the idle one. This, this hash rate is already measured on a chip level and is kind of influenced by the statistics, by, by, the, by the nature of the jobs that are being assigned to individual chips. Uh, because it's sort of like lottery when you're, uh, you know, doing a game with, with dice. Um, also, you want to check that, uh, okay, thanks. Sorry, yeah, I was explaining, I didn't check that it's, it's not on the display. Um, you want to check the temperatures that are within the limit that you like and that the shares that are uh, submitted to the pool are valid. So basically all, every time you look at the overview page, you would see the number of accepted shares, the number of rejected shares, and the stale shares. This is also an interesting thing, and it's an insight from the Bitcoin world, because people usually who just connect the miner, they don't understand what a stale share means. But basically, uh, any work that we give you on the pool that you're supposed to do the calculation for is um, valid, unless there is a new block found. And in that case, when there's a new block found and we send you uh, like a new job to work on the new block, uh, anything that you submit after this is considered invalid and we call it a stale share. And the number uh, in here should be low, almost going to zero. Uh, statistically, it's somewhere around, I don't know, 0 0.12%. Um, yeah. So let's see. So we saw the minor demo. We, do you guys want to get loud? Shall I just turn it on? Okay, and that would make that would make the the demo over. So I'll just uh, reset to the original settings. We can do overclocking a bit, but I will do it automated. So let's do uh, a ten uh, person extra with the multiplier. Oh, one thing I was going to show as well. Um, it's not very comfortable for, for regular users to go to manufacturers' websites and basically find what their device is, download some firmware, and then feed it to, through the web interface because you usually don't know like what's your hardware revision and so on. So you want this to work seamlessly. So we basically implemented nothing new, but this is like a standard feature in, in uh, any device that you use today, like even your cell phone offers you upgrades. So basically when you do an update here, um, if there is a new release of the firmware available, all you do, you just click an upgrade here and it's gonna refresh the system with the latest image. All these things could obviously be automated somewhere in the background for the bigger farms, uh, but this is for uh, like the regular users who want to use the web interface. So there was actually a third point in, in the demo that could make the miner bricked, but hopefully this is gonna work as well.
Okay, so it looks like we made it. When we go to the overview, it's the latest firmware uh, from February that we have released. I'm going to stop the miners and just conclude the demo with a few comments. Or actually, one thing that we didn't check was uh, how we're doing on the mining part. So we made uh, 1.2 tera hash throughout this small demo. Uh, unfortunately, there was no block found, so you wouldn't see any unconfirmed rewards. But we should see some hash rate coming in here. Uh, yeah, we should have started in our area. Anyways. So this is like the usual circle that a miner does. You, you get the device, you register with the pool. Uh, you connect to the pool, you look at the statistics of the device, and you, then you go back to the pool. If, if, if the hash rate reported on the pool side is what you are, were expecting that the device should be performing. Um, let's check if this one is mining again. Okay, that's operational with a new release as well. So this is it. Um, this is an open source initiative, so uh, if you're interested, um, join us, let us know. Uh, we always look for people who want to submit uh, merge requests, uh, want to work on the documentation or anything. We have a Telegram channel, we have a Git GitHub uh, project site, and we have the website where you can do the downloads. That's it.